Okay, welcome to our class, and today's topic is... Topology. Topology. Network topology is today's uh, topic. All right. Let's just switch to the... Oh, no, I don't like these transitions. Let's have that. Okay. That's better. Okay. So, network topology. And these are symbols. These are graphic symbols that symbolize different arrangements of network topologies. We have ring, mesh, star, fully connected, tree, inline or chain, or bus topology. And today we're going to analyze these four, which is going to be the ring topology, the star topology, the chain or inline, or a bus topology. Okay. At some point, you're going to have to deal with that uh, when you go to the industry. And I want you to know the basics of uh, what uh, these things mean. All right, definitions. Let's take care of some definitions. Network topology, what is? This is the arrangement of a network, including its nodes and connecting lines. Two ways of defining topo uh, network geometry. So the topology also has something that's called a geometry. And it could be a physical topology. And we can also talk about the logical or signal topology. And we're gonna, as we go along, uh, these things are going to mean a little bit more to you than right now as I'm just listing them. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, also we're going to take care of the basic elements of a network presentation. On the left side, we have hosts or nodes. And on the right side, we have connecting links. That's when we're talking about networks. Nodes or hosts as part of the network. These are the computers, WAPs, which is the wireless access points, routers, switches, hubs, bridges, and gateways, uh, printers, and other devices such as, for example, IP cameras. Okay. Uh, then uh, as far as connecting links, we're talking about copper, as usual, or fiber, or air. That's the, that's the basics of links. All right, now, okay, so we're going to jump straight into something that's called a ring topology. This is the symbol for a ring topology. And uh, as we could say, see here, uh, the, uh, the, the, the dots here, they represent the nodes or hosts. And those lines are representing the connecting links. In ring topology, each node or host connects to two adjacent nodes in a continuous pathway for signal for signals through each node. Okay. So that's uh, not a big philosophy. That's how the signal travels in something that's called a ring topology of a network. Data travels from node to node with each node along the way handling every data packet. So uh, we're not going to define what data packet is. However, just so you know that uh, this is has, it's basically the information that is being sent or received by each node. Every node acts as a repeater. So uh, in ring topology, if this computer wants to communicate with this computer, it is going to send a signal through that one with this address, because that's the first one that is, uh, this computer sees, see, uh, this computer sees. 
and it says I want to communicate with this computer uh, of such and such address uh, so it's going to shoot the information over this link because there is no direct link between those two and this one this computer is going to say oh is this data for me nope I'm going to repeat it and pass it along and so on and so on until the data gets into this computer uh, with this address and it's going to say are you this address and he's going to say yes that's me so this information is for me and that's where the communication stops can it go the other way yes it can but it is going to be something else that we're going to discover as we continue this presentation Ring topology hardware, single port NIC, uh, these are the examples, single port NIC or two port NIC. What is a NIC? NIC is something that's called a network interface card. Uh, these NICs look this way, but uh, in different type of equipment. Oh, what happened here? All right. Um, uh, in this different type of equipment, the network interface uh, cards or devices might look slightly different depending on what the equipment we're dealing with. Yeah. And you can see here, uh, this network interface card has only single port and this network interface card has two ports. Mm -hmm. So here is a $64 question. Considering physical topology, and we we'll cover that as the presentation go along, there's, there's a keyword physical topology, which NIC could be used in a ring network, single port or double port or two port. If we go back right here, <clears throat> each node has to connect to two adjacent nodes, so obviously. In this case, if we want to use um, ring topology, then we would have to apply the two port uh, network interface card. So we can connect to one node on one side and we can connect to one node on the other side. Okay. Uh, ring configuration, this is how the data travels in a ring configuration. Follow me so far? I think yes. <clears throat> now, what's the next slide? Ring and a token ring. You are going to hear this type of terminology as well. And I want you to know what the difference is between a ring and a token ring. In a ring topology, data travels only one way. And the idea of the token ring is that the data can travel both ways. Examples, uh, these uh, rings uh, most of the time are being used in uh, uh, when or men. Uh, when, for example, it's a wide area network or uh, men, uh, which is metropolitan area network, also, I should say that it should be used, it can also be used in a LAN configuration, which is not as much anymore because star topology is mostly being used in the LAN configuration, which is a local area network. Here's an example, a picture of few buildings that are interconnected with uh, some data linkages. And what do we have here? We have uh, we have a node here that the building is servicing as a node, and it has two uh, connections. And there's another building also has two connections, and so on. This building here it could be a, it could be a underground underground fiber. This could be air link. This also could be another air link. So uh, different links are being used to connect these different buildings and that could be used as a metropolitan area network okay obviously uh if you see those double lines uh, it's not an in the industry standard uh, it basically uh, these, those, those lines are drawn as such uh, and you could see uh when you download the presentation in pdf form 
you can see that uh, this line has arrows pointing this way and this arrows pointing that way on the other line. So basically that is in the form of a token ring because the information can travel both ways. If one of the links is broken, then uh, if, the, if, if, if let's say, um, if this link is broken, okay, and the computer or the computer equipment is trying to communicate with this building here, uh, if it was just a ring, uh, and if this was the only link that it could be used, then the communication will be broken. But if you're using, if you're employing the token ring topology, then if you can communicate this way, then the, com the then the computer equipment is going to try to send the link the other way. So obviously, the token ring is more efficient than the ring. <clears throat> All right. Now, examples of a ring topology that is being used in LAN configuration. Um, in LAN configuration, mostly uh, ring topology is used in, uh, while, while we're connecting switches. Right? Switches uh, are devices that are connecting nodes. So this switch can be servicing, uh, let's say, 20 computers that are connected to this switch. The another switch could be uh, servicing another 24 computers that are connected. Maybe this one is servicing 10 computers. And these switches, uh, are, if, if you want the whole thing to work as one common network, then you would have to connect these switches in certain way so uh, everything is interconnected as a spider web. All right? So the switches are mostly connected in the rack uh, or the, uh, the equipment rack. Um, in utility room or whatever the LAN room is, which is local area network room, uh, then the switches would be connected in a ring topology and everything else, the nodes, computers, printers, uh, wireless access points or anything else are being connected into the switches in a star topology, which we'll cover in the next couple of slides. All right now, suggested links. Uh, I'm not going to play those because I don't want to violate any copyrights. Uh, however, I can uh, I can send you some suggested links. Uh, this first link talks about hub, switch, and the router, and it's explained. I need you to know, or you need to know for yourselves, what the differences are between hub and a switch, and a router. Okay. Now, this one here, uh, uh, this link here is just an example of connecting switches. Uh, you don't need to watch the whole thing for our purposes. Uh, notice that I put a little sign here, a little note that says play up to 142 minutes and 42 seconds. Uh, later on, it, uh, this person is talking about uh, uh, details of how to set things up, and we're not going to talk about this. If you need to, uh, if if you like this type of uh, uh, direction uh, that has to do with networking, uh, setting up networks and uh, configuring them, then uh, you should probably investigate the IT information technology courses that are offering that are being offered in our college. Uh, all right, now uh, also hmm, this one here, I added that from last year. Uh, this year I added that. Uh, so uh, uh, MAC addresses, what are MAC addresses? And actually this, uh, in this link, uh, the, uh, the, what is covered, there's, there's a difference between uh, MAC address or the IP address and different functions of, uh, of both. Okay? So I strongly suggest that you watch those uh, these links. You need to know that. I'm going to ask you some questions on the test. You need to know what the difference is between hub, switch, and the router. Uh, and I'm going to ask you some questions about the differences uh, that have to do with MAC address and a uh, IP address, okay? internet protocol address. All right, now we're going to jump into a star topology. You see the symbol looks a little bit different. You could see one common node and every node is connected into that one common node. So in star topology, uh, each node or host of a network is attached to a central node. And usually this would be a 
switch yeah, or cascade of switches. All right. The central node is usually a hub or a switch. It's a intelligent device switch or a hub are intelligent devices that are connecting um, connecting the nodes together and they are um, um, they are distributing the data uh, between the interconnected devices. Although I said intelligent uh, device, uh, uh, when you watch that link between, uh, that talk, talks about the differences between switch and hub, uh, you're going to find out that the switch is slightly more intelligent than uh, the hub. And sometimes we want to use one or the other. Uh, the central node can also be another proprietary device such as NVR or uh, also known as network video recorder uh, and that is usually uh, that is usually uh, happening when we are installing uh, not a computer network but um, camera system CCTV closed circuit television system or camera surveillance system uh, very popular systems uh, now when now we're dealing with uh, security devices uh, star topology is the most common physical wiring configuration considering a considering the horizontal network wiring okay also remember that horizontal network wiring we will talk about this as well today okay star topology here's a different another uh, visual representation uh, concept diagram here is a switch and the computers, each computer uh, is connected into the central device, which is in this case a switch. And um, uh, when we are connecting that way, we are, uh, uh, the terminology is used that each device home runs to the central location. So home run or uh, a configuring thing in the home run configuration. Uh, that is uh, that's the terminology that's being used in the industry. Okay, so when some everything home runs to the central location, that's what it means. Okay. Start topology. So this is the concept diagram, and in reality, it looks like this. Uh, in one of our labs, we are actually going to connect a patch panel, a small version of that. Uh, the this is how the patch panels. Uh, look from uh, from from the rear. Uh, all the wires physically run, and they're being terminated at the back of the patch panels in certain configuration. The Ethernet configuration in uh, in the current lab that we're conducting this week, we are connecting the uh, RJ45 jack, which is the um, Ethernet jack, which is the computer port. Uh, we're connecting that in the POTS configuration or USOC configuration. Now, uh, when we're talking about computer networks, when we're connecting data, we're going to have to connect that thing in T568 configuration. And uh, I'm also going to show you in one of our labs on how to connect that. So you need to know how to connect both USOC or T568, okay? uh, which is basically a uh, um, data type of uh, uh, wiring configuration when it comes to terminating uh, registered jack or uh, the Ethernet the outlet. Uh, from the other side, it looks like this. Okay, basically this is, this is how the patch panel looks from the rear. Everything's being physically terminated and tested at both ends for functionality. And when uh, we go on the other side of the patch panel, you're going to have a bunch of ports cascaded together in an organized way. Um, now we have um, uh, some of the bigger uh, patch panels that are some, uh, they're called uh, rack mounted uh, patch panels, which are basically uh, in a frame that is mountable in an equipment rack. There's a certain size of that. Uh, it's a standardized size. 
Uh, what we have, we have in our lab, we have two versions of that. We have the rack mountable switch uh, patch panels. We also have the um, uh, wall mounted uh, standalone uh, smaller version of uh, patch panels. Sometimes uh, the network is not as huge. It's just a few computers, a small business configuration and whatnot. You don't need to have the whole rack equipment or equipment rack. Uh, it's enough just to get a small patch panel and mount it right on the wall. And I'm going to show you both. And we're going to terminate the smaller version of that. Uh, from there, <coughs> shorter patch cables uh, are used to basically connect each port of the patch panel uh, see the on top of uh, over here on the bottom you can see there's a patch panel with the wires terminated physically on the other side and from the patch panel each port of the patch panel is terminated or connected uh, or plugged into uh, each individual assigned port of a switch and that's how the signal is being connected from every computer so when we are running the wires and terminating physically uh, on the um, on the patch panel that is terminated tested and left alone and this this could be a, a 200 feet long uh, Ethernet cable or category cable, CAT5, CAT6, or sorry, CAT5E. CAT5 is not being used anymore, but you will still see some old installations employing CAT5. Uh, the configuration or the, uh, um, the, 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 terminate, the termination configuration is basically the same as far as color code, uh, except CAT5E is able to handle more speed than CAT5, and uh, CAT6 uh, speed goes up, CAT6A goes up, CAT7, and so on. Um, so, um, uh, but uh, now this, this type of uh, configuration uh, gives us some flexibility that uh, this, computer, this uh, port from on the patch panel is connected to a wall jack somewhere in somebody's office and there is certain device connected to it. It could be a computer, it could be a printer, it could be a VoIP telephone. Uh, now it gives us some flexibility to, to connect to uh, a certain port uh, of certain switch or maybe you can connect that to another switch uh, depending on the computer. So, so that, that's, that gives us some flexibility of patching the, um, the nodes uh, into different type of switches or ports on the switch. Okay. Now remember when I said horizontal configuration? Um, this is uh, an example of, uh, of network wiring in a building, okay? So let's say this is a floor of a building and there's a floor below and there's a floor below. So there's a main cross connect somewhere, usually in the electrical room or some sort of utility room. Uh, and then that uh, thing is connected to a first, uh, uh, first device or a first uh, um, interconnecting closet. Uh, and that closet will be part of a riser, okay? This whole thing here that I am running my mouse on, right here, all these blue devices are part of a backbone, okay? Just like the backbone that we humans have at the back of our back. Okay. All right. uh, <clears throat> so that looks like a spine or a backbone, but we're not using, we're not saying spine, we're using backbone. We're saying backbone when it comes to network. Uh, uh, so that would be the vertical configuration. Now the horizontal configuration is uh, usually uh, the nodes that are on this floor. Okay, so here is the first floor horizontal run. Here's another horizontal. That doesn't mean that the wires only go horizontally. Okay, of course, they're going to go up in the ceiling and then across the ceiling, maybe then down the wall, and that's going to be terminated, or maybe in the floor. So, uh, yes, those physically the wires will travel up and down and horizontal but this whole area is considered as horizontal connection 
Now, if one of those computers uh, is connected to that closet, it will be part of this horizontal uh, system, okay? But usually that's, uh, that's, that's basically how this is. So this is a horizontal uh, uh, configuration. That means that all the nodes are connected to one um, switch or cascade of switches or utility rack or system rack or network rack um, that, uh, that is part of uh, one horizontal run. So these will be the horizontal runs and this would be the vertical runs, also known as, uh, this, this part is also known as riser, because it rises, okay, it's riser. Uh, or you can hear uh, terminology being used uh, uh, such as uh, backbone. So this is where the main signal routing happens, and this is where the individual computers are communicating either with each other or with the other computers on the network. Structured network cabling. All right, what's the most popular physical cabling topology? The most popular topology is being that's being used in the LAN configuration will be star topology, which basically means that every uh, node or device is basically home runs to the central location where the patch panel is and for, from here those uh, ports are being patched into the switch. So it looks like a star type of a configuration. Of course, uh, physically uh, at the end of the day that it's not going to look like a star, but if you draw the concept diagram of that, it is going to look like that star symbol that we just uh, saw a few slides ago. Uh, now, I'm going to jump into something that's called a bus topology. You can see there's one common cable, and every device just taps into the one common cable. So there's no home run. There's no home running here. There's one line that is, uh, that's going across the hallway or across the ceiling or under the floor, and uh, these devices physically are basically connected in parallel with each other. There is a different way of signal uh, transmission and receiving uh, because you have to employ one wire, so there are different protocols that are being used. So each device can receive its own uh, type of data and information and then com can communicate with uh, other devices or one central device, perhaps. Uh, in bus topology, there is usually there's no one central device needed. However, it is possible that you could connect one and configure one device and that will be acting as a central device. Uh, this here on the left, uh, this is the old way of connecting networks. This will be using a coaxial cables with the uh, T taps, okay? Uh, so, um, um, there will be a T connector that uh, the coaxial cable would just go and will be connected to its own run all the way at the end until you install the last device and sometimes will be the end of line termination. And uh, uh, up till mm, I would say mid 90s or early 90s, this uh, type of uh, the networks would be uh, configured in such way. We don't use that anymore when it comes to um, uh, computer networks or LAN or local area networks communication or configuration. Uh, we use star topology. Basically, every node goes uh, and is connected home runs, uh, home runs to the one central location, but this is how this thing was used up to mid 90s. Why I'm showing you that is just so you know, uh, because uh, this, the bus topology is not, um, not entirely abandoned as an idea of connecting devices. Uh, when it comes to networking and uh, connecting devices in a network, uh, we're not only dealing with the computer networks, office environment and, and, and such, but uh, there are different type of devices that uh, sometimes uh, it's not necessary to have one central location. Uh, some devices can be connected to each other and they can pass. Uh, 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 it's actually more efficient to connect those in a bus uh, configuration. And we're going to examine some examples of that. 
all devices are connected to a single cable or cable or line in bus topology configuration. Bus topology was used in land setting until early 1990s. Presently, oh, I say 2019, well, we have 2020 now. All land horizontal systems are wired in star configuration. Uh, bus topology, although the bus topology is not used in land settings anymore, it is still implemented in certain systems. This is the most simplistic type of a configuration, and this would be one run or um, uh, one branch of a fire alarm okay, or a zone. Okay, so um, when uh, when we connect the, uh, the, the these, these two wires, we connect them right into the main uh, zone configuration or zone terminals. Uh, this line goes right from, so this would be the signal line and this would be maybe the ground line. And there would be devices, fire alarm, uh, fire alarm devices connected in a bus type of, technically it's a bus topology. And just so you know, this is how usually the analog fire alarm um, devices are connected. They are all open in the open state. Okay, if one of them uh, acts or trips uh, by detecting smoke or heat or uh, what is, whatever it is uh, designed to react to condition, usually it would be smoke or heat when it comes to fire alarm. Uh, it just shorts so this terminal would sense uh, zero ohms or close to zero ohms resistance because that thing it will be shorted uh, and that means that the equipment that uh, senses these two terminals would act as uh, it would react and uh, create a fire alarm uh, and it would display which zone the fire alarm is in uh, now also there's an end of line resistor uh, so with all the devices are open uh, the terminals, they want to see a certain resistance that is presented by the end of line resistor. That means that the line is intact and connected. If you disconnect that end of line resistor, that means the line is uh, open. So uh, the uh, fire alarm equipment is not going to uh, go into alarm state, but it's going to go into something that's called a trouble state, which means there's a trouble on the line, but not necessarily uh, anything has tripped uh, detecting a fire condition. Okay? So that would be the bus topology, the, simpl the simplest way. Also, I'm going to show you um, uh, a magnification of a uh, security alarm um, uh, printed circuit board and terminals. And uh, also there is a bus. It actually says, um, it actually says bus here and and it tells you the wires to connect because in the fire alarm there's Z type of cable that's being used and I'm going to show you that as well during one of the labs. Um, uh, then uh, the, it's, it's the old uh, uh, color code which is the uh, green, red, black and yellow. Uh, so in fire, uh, sorry, in security alarms, uh, the usually the yellow and the green cables are being used for signal and the black and red are going to be used uh, for, uh, for supplying power. That's what usually happens. If you run out of colors, you can interchange the colors, but, but that's the sort of unwritten standard or written standard. Uh, so uh, if you have the green and yellow uh, cable connected uh, to the bus terminal, that means you see the keypads, for example, these are the active devices. And they're smart devices with the intelligent devices. There's some intelligence happening in the keyboard, uh, sorry, in the keypad. There's also some other intelligence happening in the keypad. And those keypads are supposed to communicate with the main board through the bus line. And there's a different protocol, there's a certain protocol that's being used to, uh, so those two keypads can communicate simultaneously with the main board by only using two, uh, the, uh, set of two conductors. One is serving as a ground and the other one, 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 the other one is serving as a, um, a signal wire. So that would be the example of how bus uh, topology is used still in the industry today. Okay. Now, 
inline or chain topology. In this configuration, nodes are connected to each other through, uh, uh, sorry, again. Uh, in this configuration, uh, nodes are connected to each other uh, through each other in a chain configuration. Each node acts as a repeater, right? as opposed to the ring configuration where the last device is not connected to the first device. So in the ring, the last device is connected to the first device, so it's making a loop, kind of a, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's forming a loop pathway. So this will be a ring topology. Mm -hmm. And in this case here, there is still a link, uh, but uh, the last device is not connected to the, uh, to the first device. And this will be this, the, the graphic representation of a symbol of inline chain uh, or chain topology. Uh, this inline or chain topology quite often is used in the industry when there is process uh, uh, control devices uh, in machinery. Uh, usually they're connected in the inline or chain topology. Uh, there is not that much data flowing through them, uh, maybe just some control data, and uh, each machine or device has its own intelligence that is supposed to run. So maybe those are being, uh, uh, th those devices are being used to communicate some control changes or, uh, or, or signals that uh, indicate uh, uh, well, data that would maybe has to, that has to be loaded once and left there. So um, uh, for the simplicity and ease of installation uh, in, in the industry, the, um, in, the, in the logic control or PLCs, those devices are going to be connected in an inline or chain topology. Uh, inline or chain topology in the everyday line, everyday use. Uh, on the left here, we can see there's a switch and there's a computer and there is a printer. So this workstation and printer are connected in star topology. See that? Each device home runs to the central location. And in this case, which is also common uh, scenario, uh, only the computer connects to the um, to the main uh, location, a switch port, and the printer is connected in line with this computer. I'm trying to give you some um, uh, some examples from the real life as far as uh, common uh, ways of setting things up. Um, <clears throat> well, what can you see here? The advantage of um, the advantage of the system on the left is that this printer can be used by other users uh, within the network. Um, could be office environment. Uh, quite often, uh, what happens is the the uh, the certain business or company uh, can purchase one huge expensive printer that serves all of the users and all of the users can access this printer through the network. Uh, that's the advantage of that. Uh, the advantage of the one on the side, uh, uh, on the right side, is that, uh, well, some people have smaller printers or personal printers. Uh, they don't need to walk to the main printer room. Uh, so, uh, so each individual user can have their own printer. Uh, and the advantage of that maybe is uh, I could see that well less wiring is being used. Okay. So uh, these are very common scenarios. Uh, now another uh, I'm, I'm I'm giving you examples of real life that it's not just the office printer or whatnot, uh, but uh, if you decide to go in this type of uh, business, you're going to come up. Uh, um, you're going to uh, deal with certain type of equipment, and I want you to know the names of that and how they work. This is the best. Uh, this is the basic. Uh, uh, these are the basic devices that uh, you will come across when you're dealing with uh, basic networks. So um, uh, this will be an inline configuration, and you could see this Ethernet extender is connected inline with the Ethernet link. Right. So, how uh, Ethernet extender is a device that 
can make the Ethernet or computer line or um, link uh, longer than it is designed to. Because if you have um, uh, a device that is further than 300 feet, because Ethernet link uh, it could be 300 feet at the most from end to end, and we are uh, we're going to talk about that when we deal with types of cables. But just uh, just so you know, uh, the most distance from one end to the other uh, with a category cable copper link, uh, it could be no more than 300 feet. But if something is further than 300 feet, yes, it still can be connected using some device that is called a Ethernet extender. Now the Ethernet extender gets its power, which is basically like a re signal repeater. So this whole link becomes slower than its specified speed. However, it still can be used as a link in situations when speed is not crucial. Like for example, if you are running something that's called a Citrix system, uh, where, uh, where the software is installed in one central location and the computers are just something that's called dumb terminals that are uh, utilizing the software in the main um, uh, location and the computer is just displayed so there's a lot of data going on a lot of video signals going on uh, so you would not uh, uh, you would not use that one because speed is crucial however in a different situation let's say for example you have something a cash register uh, which is basically a pc a computer uh, that uh, that is uh, installed at the pos which stands for point of sale at a grocery store or a hardware store um, then there's not so much data uh, that travels between that device and the central location that requires so much speed. There will be just a single burst of data sending that the transaction has, made, uh, has been made. And uh, that doesn't require uh, speed, it just needs to be transferred to the main location. But it doesn't have to be transferred fast. So, um, uh, so that uh, you can use something that's called a Ethernet extender. Where does it get its power from? Uh, well, there are two ways, just so you know. Uh, you can plug this device into the wall using a, a portable transformer, plug-in transformer. Uh, but if you don't have power uh, along the way where you're connecting it, uh, then you can use something that's called PoE. Right? PoE. power over ethernet which means that the cable the data cable is not only supplying the signal it is also supplying the power uh, but in this case the switch has to be capable of supplying the poe and some switches have ports that are configured or designed or manufactured with the poe capability and some devices some switches are just uh, signal signal only Okay, let's keep going and let's take a look at another, at another device. Okay, inline uh, or chain topology. This PoE injector is connected in line with the wireless access point. Uh, okay, so let's say uh, you have an existing network and the client wants to have a uh, wireless access point uh, for the clients to access Wi-Fi or for the workers to access Wi-Fi. Uh, so they can connect the, to the to the network with their cell phones or laptops or whatnot. The existing network uh, utilizes switch a switch that is not PoE capable. Uh, you can install something that's called PoE injector, and it's at the rack location. So one end here, it just plugs in right to the wall to get the power, and there is always power at the rack location because rack you know has to be a the, the, the equipment uh, has to be plugged in somewhere so you will find power there and you plug in the ethernet wire into the input of that device and from the output of it you get still the signal and uh, with the power uh, uh, added to the wiring that is that is there so then you can just plug in 
just the Ethernet cable right into the wireless access point, and there is no need to look for additional power. So you can uh, you don't have to plug in uh, the 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 this device into the wall in any sort of way. It gets its power from that. So this PoE injector is connected in line with the wireless access point. Uh, all right, can you define PoE? I think I just did that for you. Yeah. Now, inline topology or chain topology, uh, this VoIP telephone set is connected in line with the workstation computer. Very common situation. You will have one data outlet, and with this data outlet, uh, you can use VoIP telephone and a computer. Very very common situation in um, oh, uh, some of the huge uh, hardware stores. I'm not going to say which, but if you work there, you will see that. Uh, you're going to see telephone with a big display and a computer or cash register, which basically is a computer. Uh, and you're going to see the wire connected to the input of the uh, VoIP telephone set. And it is going to, uh, the line is going to continue from the output of that into the computer. And just so you know, usually 99% of the time, this telephone doesn't even have to be powered. So <clears throat> if the telephone is, uh, uh, like for example, there is no PoE coming out of this outlet because there's no PoE switch on the other side, then you have to plug in the telephone to the wall to, to, to be powered. And if you unplug that phone, that thing still, still should pass the signal through the computer, even if the phone is not powered. Uh, consider PC0, PC1, and PC2. What do we have here? PC0, PC1, and PC2. Okay, where are we going with this? Uh, are these PCs connected? to the switch in a ring configuration? Well, no, because here's the switch. They're connected to the star configuration. Okay. And then the router is connected in line with the cloud through a modem usually. Yeah. Is it a ring or is it a star? Well, physically, Okay, I know where I went with that. Uh, physically, it looks like a star configuration. And it is. Can this system work as a ring? And if so, then how? Okay, we need some kind of a thinking music here, but uh, you know, uh, maybe, maybe next year I'll, I'll, I'll arrange some music for that. Now, Okay, here is how it can work as a ring configuration. You see, remember that uh, logical or physical topology or signal routing? Here's a switch. And these are different nodes or computers. And they are connected physically, they are connected to the um, to the main switch in a star topology. So physical topology is star configuration. Uh, now, uh, logical topology is the signal routing. This is the signal routing that could be changed. It can be a star physical routing, uh, sorry, logical signal um, distribution. Or it could be a ring, depending on how the switch is configured. It's, it's quite hypothetical situation here. You're not going to be dealing with that type of uh, um, exercise when, you are, when you're installing networks. I just did that just to visualize the differences between the physical and the logical signal routing here. Okay? So, uh, depending on the switch configuration, all right? And this would be the visual representation on how um, a physical 
star topology can be used, the signal can be traveling as a um, ring topology uh, as far as the logical uh, signal routing. Okay. Now, uh, lab foundation, structure cabling hardware. This is going to be for the next lab because today, we're the, today still, uh, we're going to have the B groups this week. Uh, and we're still connecting the jacks in the USOC configuration. Uh, but after that, we're going to connect, uh, you can connect the Ethernet type of uh, uh, termination into the jacks. So um, uh, I just want to explain how some of those things look like. This is a patch panel. And you can see that this thing is rated for CAT 5E. Yeah. And it, that's what it looks like from the front. And this is what it looks like from the rear, okay? Remember uh, when we, uh, okay, some of us already, the group A has uh, done the lab last week. Group B is going to do the lab this week. Uh, so I gave you individual jacks to deal with and you're connecting the wires to the jacks. Now when, you come, when you're talking about patch panel, it's the same, you're just putting a bunch of jacks together in a cascade type of uh, formation. And on the other end, you have a cascaded type of uh, termi uh, uh, terminals. So um, one, two, three, four, these four terminals or eight terminals because it's a four pairs. This would correspond to one of the jacks and the next one is will be corresponding to another jack and so on. So it looks like there's a lot of colors and looks like complicated in intimidating at first, but if you uh, just take it apart as one by one, on one by one basis, you're going to see that basically these are a bunch of jacks stuck together and they are installed on a frame. Okay. Uh, also, um, that's basically what the jack looks like if it's standalone jack, okay? It also has the colors. Um, and uh, I am explaining to you during the lab uh, what pairs or what prongs are employed or connected to which terminals here. And the type of termination uh, that is used, okay, well, let's take a look at the cables first. Uh, this will be two different types of cables. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but uh, here's a CAT 5E cable. And here's CAT6 cable. CAT6 cable not only has the twist, because each pair has a certain amount of twist, but you can see CAT5E uh, and CAT6. Like, for example, if you look at the blue pair, in CAT5E, the blue pair, for example, has less amount of twist than the CAT6 cable. CAT6 cable is capable of handling more speed therefore it needs uh it needs a tighter twist and the twist needs to be more consistent so the precision of making the cat 6 cable is uh the, the process is more expensive than making cat 5e but this one can handle more data than that one and it also has you can quickly tell that it's cat 6 cable it's or or, or at least it is not cat 5e cable because there's that separator here right there uh, and it's uh, each cable has its own channel that it lays in and that is also kind of um, uh, twirled or twisted around so the pairs have uh, the pairs have the twist on each own on each own um, and uh, and and also the pairs are twisted around each other just to disperse the electromagnetic field that can cause something that's called a crosstalk. And we will talk about that as well in later theory classes. All right, now, the last thing I want to show you is something that's called insulation displacement connection. Uh, this is a little bit of a history thing, synopsis on uh, the type of connections that were being used. You can read that if you want. Um, now, here is how a insulation displacement connection works. <clears throat> here is the connector, and you can see it's kind of a V-shape, sort of. And here is the conductor inside a jacketing. Okay? Now, you push the connect, you push the, you lay it on top, the conductor, and you have to force it 
into the connector by something that's called a punch down tool. You're forcing it in, that connector bites into the insulation and makes a contact with the conductor inside. Now, the one thing that uh, I got this picture from this side on the internet, um, it shows a stranded cable. That's a big mistake, and I just want you to know that. Insulation displacement connection is meant for a solid core cable because that when those when this connector bites into the conductor, if it's a stranded cable, it's going to break some of the strands. So the connection is not as full as it should be. But if it's a solid core connector conductor, then the connector is going to bite and hold on to it uh, properly. Okay, so that's the idea of insulation displacement connection. And uh, you are going to see that the, in, in, in today's lab or this week's lab, we're using, we are using something that's called toolless jack. It's also, um, it's also a insulation displacement connection. However, the pushing of the wire is being done by the housing uh, of the, by the connector itself. So you open the hinge, put the wires in, and close the hinge, and that hinge is actually pushing those connect conductors in, uh, excuse me, into those connectors. Uh, however, uh, in, in a lot of cases, you're going to get uh, uh, jacks that are not toolless. You're going to need a tool, to like a punch down tool, uh, that you're going to force in those conductors into the connectors, and then the punch down tool is also going to cut off the excess wiring uh, and it's going to have a nice, nicely made connection. All right. Uh, all right. So I just made a disclaimer here. This photo shows stranded and should be uh, insulation displacement is meant for uh, solid core wire. Okay. Okay. So that's the uh, that's the end of this class. It's almost eleven, uh, so almost twelve o'clock. And I'm going to see some of you today during this lab, and the rest of you I'm going to see tomorrow during tomorrow's lab. And I will see you when I see you. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Any questions? Oh, do you know when our first test is? Uh, I'll have to check the schedule and I'll let you know this week. Okay, it's going to be on the same basis, um, online test. And it's going to cover everything from the beginning to the, uh, you know what, probably this week. Okay, this week's theory and the lab content. So I just need to make sure that the last group, which is group 2B, uh, tomorrow is going to have that lab. And after that, I can launch a test uh, that is going to cover everything from the beginning until now, including this week's lab, uh, this lab that ends this week for, for the second group. Um, I, see, I see that a lot of jobs asking for i don't know what you mean but it's okay i hope you i answered your question uh so uh okay i'll talk to you when i talk to you and i will see you when i see you thank you for watching